all have chess games where we play much better than usual. In this video, I want to show you the biggest uh, win of my entire chess career, where I defeated the 2700 ELO rated player, so that's just incredible, I have never done anything like that before, and also I did it in style, I mean I completely overplayed him, not just like a blunder or something, just literally crushed him with black pieces, so I hope you're gonna enjoy this game, it, it's also very very instructive, so let's get started. So I played this game as black against Jeffrey Shonk, one of the strongest chess players of my generation. And so I played the Philidor defense, my favorite opening, e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, e5. Now you can't stake there and enter the end game, but Jeffrey wanted to, to play the main line, which is knight f3, the most active move as well. Bishop e7, nothing special yet. Castles, castles, c6. And now we have the main line, rook to e1. Remember, Hikaru Nakamura played here queen to e2. By the way, I have a video somewhere here. Uh, it, it's also amazing. The Philidor works against everybody, but Jeffrey played here rook to e1, knight to b6. I'm attacking this bishop. That is one of the key ideas here. And now there are a bunch of different ways for the bishop to go away. Jeffrey played bishop d3, which is not one of the main lines, but of course definitely possible, a very solid line. Still, now the second knight goes to d7, because now the pawn on e5 is hanging. Bishop b3 takes, knight, uh, bishop takes, and knight goes to c5, very active here, attacking this bishop, attacking the a4 pawn, and yeah, basically I want just to get to bishop's advantage. So that is why uh, Jeffrey played bishop takes c5, but now I still get it, maybe you can argue that the pawns are doubled, so white has some compensation for it, but still the position should be pretty pleasant for black. e5 has been played, the most active move, obviously the knight wants to go to e4, yeah, so that seems to be scary. Also, this bishop is now open, so there might be some checkmating ideas. I played c4 immediately because I wanted to exchange the queens and go into the endgame. Because I thought, well, the pawn structure is very good, I have two bishops, so the endgame should favor me. Uh, bishop e4 has been played, now queen takes d1, rook takes d1, and bishop e6. I'm finishing my development. And, well, I want to fight for the D file, which is the only open file. Remember, you always want to uh, fight for the open files. Knight D4, well, obviously a very good move, trying to exchange this bishop, because, well, if you take it, then I no longer have uh, two bishops advantage. I played here Rook to D8, just finishing my development. Knight uh, C to E2. Bishop c5, putting even more pressure, because now if you take, then suddenly you have some difficulties with this f-pawn, and it doesn't seem to be that great for white. So white played c3, which is a great move, as you can see here, and I went back to, to c8, saying that, well, if you don't want to take my bishop, then I'm gonna save it, and maybe potentially I'm gonna attack this one on e5. He played f4, which seemed to me like not such a great move because it's uh, weakening the whole diagonal. Now the knight is pinned, and also I immediately wanted to attack this whole pawn chain, so I played the move f6. Now e takes f, rook takes f6, and now suddenly there are some weaknesses. This pawn on f4 is weak, this bishop is not protected, maybe this knight is coming to d5 and then to f4, to e3, so let's see. He played bishop to c2, just stepping back for now, knight to d5, now adding another uh, attacking piece here, king went to h2, and now I have a choice between picking up the pawn or knight is 3 and fork. Basically both moves are good, but I decided to play knight is 3 because I'm exchanging this bishop and I thought I have two powerful bishops, basically two monsters, so that can't be bad for me. White played rook to d2, I just took it on c2, although apparently there was a better move instead, bishop b6, well, yeah, that's kind of difficult to spot in the blitz game, so the idea is to play c5 maybe, but I mean knight f3 is there, yeah, the bishop might be hanging, but it's too difficult. So I played here just uh, knight takes, rook takes, and rook to e8, well, I wanted to get an open file to make my rook more active, that wasn't the best move too. Instead, I could have played here h5, but yeah, once again, I have made this move next move because it's important to uh, to stop white's initiative, but yeah, somehow I wanted to activate my rook first. Rook to f1, and now h5. Rook to d2 back, bishop d6. Well, I wanted to activate my bishop because it's creating a lot of difficulties for white here. 
and white played knight to f3, basically giving me up this pawn on f4, but I didn't want to take it immediately, because once I do it, somehow I have this light squares bishop, which is not that great, as I have a lot of pawns on light squares. I wanted to activate it first, at least put it on d5, where it would be very dangerous, and then we will see what happens. So I step back, um, rook to d1, bishop e6, and now bishop to d5, just look at those bishops. I mean, it's just two monsters there. So king to f2. Now I took it because I thought, well, if, if you take it on f4, then I'm just taking it with a rook. I have this pin here, and I could attack it multiple times, and I definitely have uh, some significant advantage. What happened instead here, my opponent took on d5 with a rook, sacrificing the exchange, because in a blitz game, well, you normally want to put some pressure, to put some... Um, uh, to create some threats for your opponent. At this point, I have like 37 uh, seconds left, so my opponent wanted to attack me with two knights. But the problem is, I'm given this check, bishop e3, then I take the rook, rook takes back, attacking both of the pawns, but I have an amazing rook to b6. I don't care about those pawns, I want to take on b2, and I want to get to the king, because the king is very vulnerable here. So knight g3 has been played, rook takes b2, I don't care what happens, I want to create some checkmating ideas. At h5, yeah, but currently there is no danger for my king, that's the most important thing. So I just played rook to f2. Initially I wanted to take here on g2, but then I decided to play bishop g d4 check, because it's a discovered check, everything is protected for now, and then I'm basically just taking the c3 pawn, and that creates a huge passer for me. And also, of course, some checkmating ideas, the knight can't move here, and some checks are coming. Knight went to f4, that's a very good move because it's protecting the g2 pawn and making the task more difficult uh, for me. I played bishop b4, just stepping back, saying that, okay, I have this c3, uh, c2 idea, how do you stop it? Also, the rook might come to f1 at some point. Rook to d7, and now just c3. Rook to c7, just stopping it, but that would create a lot of checkmating ideas. Can you stop the video for a second and find checkmate in three moves here? Okay, hopefully I have found it, so the right way to do that is c2 check, the only uh, way to stop it is uh, rook takes c2, but now rook to f1 and the king suddenly has no moves, so the knight has to go back and then you take it, it's a checkmate. Unfortunately I had only 5 seconds at this point, so I haven't seen this resource with a c2 pawn sacrifice, I played just rook d8, I gave a few checks just to get more time, and then I saw the move bishop to a3 and rook d1 checkmate. So here you can see the game review from chess.com. I have apparently played like 2900 rated player, which is incredibly amazing for me. And Jeffrey played 2750, which is also, yeah, very, very strong. But well, my accuracy was 86% and that was enough to beat such a tough top grandmaster. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And in this one, I'm showing you how I entered the god level and played the chess game with 3300 rating. So I guarantee it's gonna blow your mind.